Thanks again, guys, for your patience and thanks for uh, tuning in. And for those of you who don't know me, if you happen to stumble upon this, my name is Jackie M. I'm a former Malaysian restaurant owner. I have a special needs child. I gave up my restaurant a few years ago to look after him full time. So I do a lot of live streaming. And if you tuned in, this is a second iteration of my easy chili crab cook along because I had Noah with me yesterday because I had to pick him up from school early because of some issues and then he had a bit of a fun a uh, bit of a, <laughs> a fun trying to get involved here and not just that during the broadcast itself you can't see off camera but something happened which made me decide instead of trying to fix everything and whatever I might as well just cook it again okay so this is my second version of my easy chili crab and if it's your first time tuning into my lockdown cook alongs what they are uh, basically cook along broadcasts that are built around the theme first of all of Malaysian cooking and also of recipes that are easy for you to follow at home regardless of your skill level and easy in the sense that also in so far as the ingredients are involved you don't really need to run out and get anything too super exotic or too expensive to be able to attempt this recipe okay so today we are making a easy, a easy chili crab and I just want to give a shout out to Tavis. Tavis is a gentleman who supplies restaurants with live seafood, things like uh, crab, abalone, coral trout, and that sort of stuff. But because of the lockdown and restaurants closing, he had had to he has had to pivot his business so that he now sells direct to the public as well. And you need to pick up from his Bankstown location. So Tra Tavis very generously offered me a couple of mud crab for this particular session. But if you live in Sydney or you know anyone who does, please support Tavis. I've put up a link to his Facebook group there, bits.ly slash seafood Tavis, all lowercase because uh, bit.ly links are case sensitive. And that will take you to his Facebook group where you can see the specials that he posts there every couple of days, okay? But you do need to go and pick up from him, but they are wholesale priced live seafoods, okay? So I paid him a visit yesterday and gave me two mud crab, and this is the second one, okay? So here's the mud crab and I do have a video that I filmed yesterday showing how to clean these crabs but I will share them with my blog post when it goes up on my website and my website of course is jackiem.com.au and I have actually, I used to sell chili, uh, chili prawns, sambal prawns at my restaurant and I've made chili prawns in, uh, on television as well, a couple of times in fact and but uh, it's based around the same recipe that we're going to do today using crab all right so let me just try and get some gloves apparently I've run out just <laughs> sorry like I said guys just say hello let me know where you're watching from and if you are interested in getting these recipes and also in getting notified about my future uh, broadcast right please sign up to my email list that link on the bottom bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along is uh, specially tagged for people who are interested in my recipes from my cook alongs so you get the recipe sent out to you via email okay um, again just uh, yeah share, share this out to everyone that you think might be interested in this particular broadcast uh, fortunately people were messaging me last night about not being able to find these now I want to be, <laughs> I think in this era of Zoom, I think a lot of people when I say check out my broadcast, they think they're joining a Zoom session and they're trying to find out how to join it, okay? Now, these are actually public broadcasts, okay? So you don't join it, you just watch it, okay? You watch it and you interact by commenting, but you're not looking for a particular Zoom room to actually join a private meeting, okay? That is something that's coming later okay that's a different iteration but these are just basically me cooking and showing to the world and you just all you need to do to be able to catch these are uh, first of all you can go to my facebook page which is jackie m food so facebook.com slash jackie m food or better still go and join my free facebook group which is jackie m's malaysian street food kitchen okay all my broadcasts end up there um, so Jackie Young's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, do a search for it on Facebook and you will find it and that group was specifically created for all my broadcasts, okay? But insofar as joining to cook along, yeah, joining in the sense that you're hopping onto my Facebook cook page and watching me while I cook, alright? Does that make sense? Now, like I said, this particular recipe is something that I used to use in my restaurant and I just want to point out 
if you go and do a search for chili crab and specifically Singapore chili crab because our neighbors down south like to claim this as a <laughs> their national dish but we know better we Malaysians know better but uh, there are a number of different iterations with this dish as with a lot of Malaysian dishes it really depends on the ethnicity the you know the cultural background of the person doing the cooking all right the Chinese you go to the Chinese restaurant to eat chili crab in Singapore or Malaysia the version will be a little bit different it'll be a little lighter a little bit more gingery uh, garlicky you go to a Malay restaurant or something like that it might have a little bit more oomph to it okay they might put blachan and all those sort of like and be spicier all right I tend to try and like split the difference a little bit when I did it at my restaurant I did put blachan in it today we're not going to okay partly because of the whole lockdown theme and also partly because I just want to show you how uh, to do this pull this off pretty easily and it's going to be a fairly like gingery garlicky especially garlicky you do want a lot of garlic for this okay so what sort of ingredients are we using now uh, the other thing I want to mention as well the way I used to do it in my restaurant was I used to actually flash fry the seafood first okay I would dip this uh, seafood in some egg and then dip them in some flour and then just fry them up for a minute okay and that just kind of gives it a nice crust okay and also helps to cook it and then later on I just basically toss it back into well if, if it's prawns I don't toss it back I just cook it in the oil and take it out and then I pour the sauce over it but if it's crab I, I toss it back into the wok and just toss it around for and simmer it for another minute or so but you know I don't like doing it that way means that I'm not throwing this crab into the pot of or the wok of sauce and simmering it from zero to hundred percent okay because to me that can cause it to kind of like break down a little bit okay and I don't want that to happen frying it to, uh, gives it a little bit of a sturdiness but you don't have to do it the way I do it if you're leery about frying anything I know a lot of you guys are <laughs> then just throw it in and then just simmer it with the sauce okay so I'm happy for you to do that but what we're going to do today we are going to fry it up a little bit I don't have that much oil here this is about uh, less than uh, about two-thirds of an inch of oil so let's turn this on first okay and let's talk about the ingredients we're going to be using now so we've got the crab obviously and I mentioned in the uh, ingredients list if you followed the original event uh, you want either crab or prawn and you can even use fish look in all honesty this sauce is so versatile you can use it for anything you can use it for chicken if you want right um, and a lot of people get a little bit intimidated with Malaysian cooking and especially if it's something you can eat at a restaurant you'd be surprised once you nail like a couple of basic fundamentals of Malaysian cooking you can pretty much do a lot of restaurant dishes at home okay um, but if you're still if you're still intimidated you do know apart from my free, free Facebook group apart from my free broadcast I actually run a, uh, a subscription based group where I actually teach you guys how to cook systematically okay and I engage with you guys directly as part of the community I answer your questions and I have a course there like of uh, Malaysian cooking essentials where you learn everything over 50 videos there all specially shot for you guys and I go through all different types a separate library of Asian ingredients I go through all the different types of Asian ingredients and I keep adding to all these as well and like I said I do master classes in that group it's all at very 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 low <laughs> monthly subscription so if you want to check that out you can find it at bit.ly slash Jackie M food okay bit b i t uh, dot l y slash Jackie M food all lowercase Jackie spelled J A C K I E guys get it right <laughs> I'm tired of people not being able to spell my name even my Facebook friends spell my name wrong it's really annoying there's a Jackie is spelled J A C K I E okay my way okay as far as the ingredients like I said we've got some crab here uh, got an onion you you don't need the whole onion okay but we've got a couple of eggs here okay we're gonna I'll show you what we're going to do with them I've got some bits of sad <laughs> greens they're just for garnish okay they're from my little herb garden my fell herb garden <laughs> uh, I've got a little chunk of ginger this is actually just frozen and defrosted ginger and I often tell you guys that if you go to the freezer section of any Asian grocery store you'll find that they have a whole cavalcade of frozen vegetables okay things like frozen pandan leaves frozen banana leaves frozen ginger um, not garlic uh, frozen lemongrass and a lot of different stuff right that you can buy and keep in your freezer frozen galango and then you just take out what you need and and use them in your curries it really depends obviously uh, you know if it's frozen and defrosted it's all limp like that it wouldn't be that suitable for a salad or something that that leaves the crunch uh, of like fresh ginger okay but if you're just crunching it all up and frying it up 
which is what we're doing today, then it doesn't matter. So buy frozen, because frozen will cost like a quarter of what it costs fresh, at least by uh, Sydney prices anyway. Okay, so we've got a ton of garlic here, okay? I like a lot of garlic usually, but especially for this dish, lots of garlic. This is just peeled garlic over here. And again, onions and chili. Okay, you can use fresh chilies. You can use dried chilies. If you've seen my broadcast, I do a lot of the dried chili boiled in water and then blended uh, and that sort of stuff. You can do that, but we're going to, because we're doing the whole shortcut way, we're going to use, I've got some uh, bottled chilies. Uh, this is actually homemade fresh chili condiment, right? There's chili and garlic and salt, okay? Because it's got salt in it already, it will affect uh, how much salt I put into the sauce. I don't actually put salt directly, I put some chicken powder in it um, because obviously it's already salty here, okay? So all these things you're gonna take into consideration. If you don't have that, you can just use sriracha or uh, chili sauce if you want, okay? Again, remember we're keeping this simple. Now, uh, let me just, one more thing. Okay. Now, in the ingredients list, I mentioned lemon juice. Okay, lemon juice, lime juice will do. And ironically, I don't have either. So usually I'll tell people, okay, you're cooking a Malaysian dish, you need some tamarind, Malaysian tamarind. So I guess to some people might be a little bit exotic, a little bit outside their, um, you know, <laughs> their realm of consciousness in grocery shopping. Ironically, it's the other way with me. I don't usually think to stock up on lemons or lemon juice, but I always have tamarind on hand, okay? So this tamarind concentrate, what it does, it provides sourness to this dish, okay? So what you wanna do with the sauce, you want a balance of sweet and sour and spicy, okay? As with a lot of Malaysian and uh, I guess, well, with some Malaysian dishes, okay? So remember, sweet, sour, and spicy. And thickener, yesterday, if you saw yesterday's session, I actually used cornstarch, because I mentioned on air, I had some cornstarch that I bought for a, a session that I did with my coaching community. Um, so I wanted to use it and see how it turned out, but it's not typically what I use. Uh, today, we're going to use potato starch instead, okay? So this is potato starch and it is a lot more expensive. <laughs> uh, but potato starch as a thickener uh, will hold its starchiness better. And also it doesn't fog up your sauce, okay? Cornstarch does, okay? So these are one uh, the, uh, the little things that you gotta kind of like appreciate insofar as the differences between all these different starches are concerned, okay? Um, but if you've only got cornstarch, just use cornstarch. I ate today the, the, the chili crab from last night today, this morning, and it tastes fine, you know? And I think like visually, it does look a little bit more foggy, but uh, if you saw the pictures I posted on Facebook, you'll have to admit they still look nice, right? Okay. So what we're going to do, and don't forget, if you want the recipe, please sign up to my email list, bit.ly slash Jackie and cook along. And if you're interested in seafood and you're based in Sydney or you know people who are, go ahead and support Tavis of uh, Seafood Tavis, okay? Bit.ly slash Seafood Tavis will take you to his fa uh, Facebook group that uh, that's where he actually allows people to order seafood from him directly. Okay, so let's peel the onion and we're going to blitz all of this, okay? So now the Chinese way of doing this, okay? Chinese, um, look, I, I feel like, I, you know, I know a lot of you guys are Malaysian watching this, but uh, you have to appreciate not everyone is, okay? So for those of you who are not Malaysian, never been to Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Singapore is made up of like uh, multi-ethnic multi, multi groups, okay? And people throw around the term multicultural a lot, even in Western countries, but Malaysia is multicultural in a different way. We're pluralistic in the sense that uh, the different ethnicities all contribute like, you know, evenly to the food and cultural landscape in Malaysia. So the Chinese in Malaysia will look very distinctly Chinese. Our food may a lot of times be quite distinctly Chinese and the Malays likewise and the Indians likewise, okay? Um, and then when it comes to cooking certain even national dishes like nasi lemak, like curries and all that, if you ate it at a Chinese Malaysian house, the curry will be a little bit different to how your Indian neighbor will cook it and all that, all right? Even though they're all called the same thing, Malaysian chicken curry, say, or something like that. So these are the little nuances of Malaysian culture and cuisine that you will need to appreciate, okay? So today I'm doing a little bit more Chinese stuff. Now, this is the ginger, usually in a Chinese version of chili crab, they will have to slice up, okay? But this is soft because it's defrosted 
and I'm, I'm blending all of this anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it along with the others. Just let me turn off my phone before it bugs anyone else. Okay, sorry about that. Again, guys, uh, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Uh, it feels a little bit weird because usually I promote the hell out of my regular Friday broadcast, but then yesterday, because of the situation with Noah and all the things that happened during the broadcast, I couldn't actually promote it. And then now today I'm doing this broadcast where I'm telling everyone to watch this <laughs> with no build up to it. Okay, just, but let's, yeah, let's see how we go. But yeah, say hello and, and, and let me know if you're watching a replay or you're watching this live and where you're doing it from, all right? Okay, so we've got the onion, we've got the ginger, we've got the garlic. If you've got fresh chilies, you want to chop up the chilies as well. And all of this are going in a food processor. And you know what? I forgot the cap for this, so let's not use this. Let's use the thermomix, okay? But the other unit does the same thing. Okay, so we're throwing all of this, and we're gonna chop this up, okay? And again, if you've got fresh chilies, throw that in here as well. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So it's not completely pureed, okay? It's just minced. Put this aside. What we're going to do with the crab, the oil is heating up over here. Okay. Let's. What we're going to do is just move this out. We're gonna separate one of the eggs. And this is going in the sauce later on. Okay, with this here, we're gonna dip the crab in here. Again, this is a step that you can bypass, okay? If you choose to just simmer the crab raw in your sauce that we're making in a second, go for your life, okay? Uh, it's, but this was how I did it, and to be fair, I mostly cooked instead of chicken, uh, instead of chili crab, I, I made chili prawns at my restaurant, and chili prawns was, uh, this is how I prepared it, okay? So dip it in the egg yolk, or even just egg is fine, it just so happens that I'm using the egg white in the other in the sauce later on anyway, so I figured I might as well just use egg yolk here. All right, so we've got this, and you can put some tapioca starch in here. Tapioca starch of the three different starches, the corn starch, the potato starch, and tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is the cheapest, okay? But it's also the least, the least starchy, okay? The tapioca starch is a cheaper version of potato starch. Corn starch, like I say, it's a little bit of a different animal, okay? Let's just heat this up. I hope you can see this. You know what? Let me just move. Okay. My camera. <laughs> I just realized it's at a little bit of an awkward position today. Okay. Okay. That's not doing much. But let's see how we go. Okay. I wanted to move this across here because this side here has a stronger, uh, stronger heat. Okay, so we've got this that's been dipped in, in egg. Then now we're gonna dip it in starch, okay? And we're gonna fry this up. It's not quite hot enough, okay? But maybe let's just do it anyway. Okay, okay. It may get a little bit exciting here because there's a lot of moisture in the crab, especially with crab in the shell, okay? So just be warned that you make it a little bit lively here, okay? So just dip.
So again, doing this just kind of gives it a layer of crusty protection for when it goes in the sauce, so it doesn't just kind of like break down in the sauce. And also, in all honesty, if I have to be blunt about it, it makes it look bigger, right? Because of the coating around it. Okay, remember you're not trying to cook this all the way. If, it, if it's prawns, it will be cooked all the way by this stage, okay? So, but if you're cooking crab, don't try and fry it for like 15 minutes or something like that, okay? You still need to cook it some more in the sauce, okay? And if you're using prawns, uh, what I would do was I would leave the head and the tail intact but I would peel the body and devein it, okay? But you might find with a lot of Chinese restaurants that they actually are quite happy to leave the, the, the shell on, okay? Again, first of all, it makes it look bigger and second of all, the, Chi the Chinese don't really have, uh, Asians in general, I think, don't really have much of an issue about eating seafood on the shell, okay? Unlike a lot of Australians. Let's try this in. Okay. Again, remember this step you can actually skip. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, the the nice stuff here. Okay, so I don't actually throw this out. I, I keep I keep the, the the yellow bits in uh, and add it to the sauce later on. Okay. Ideally, you want a finer sieve to be able to pick up all the bits that might have fallen into there. So we might do that in a minute. But in the meantime, let's turn that off. And what we're going to do now is we're going to cook up the rumpa. Okay, rumpa is like this all-encompassing word that refers to the it really actually means spice paste but look this in so far as spices are concerned there's really not much happening here it's just onion garlic and ginger and chilies if you had chilies in here but because my chili is already pureed i'm adding it separately okay but here we go in goes the rumpa okay and as always if you followed my broadcast you followed my content you know that i would actually hold off on adding the oil until the, 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 the wetness of the rumpa is reduced, okay? Because you, you see all the cookbooks, all the chefs will tell you, heat up some oil and then throw this batch of like wet, juicy, like onion puree and all that sort of stuff. And what happens, it just splatters all over your kitchen and it splatters oil on your hands and it freaks you out and puts you off trying to attempt Malaysian cooking, right? So this is what I do to work around that. Um, I fry this up in here, the sizzling a little bit, okay? That's all the, the juices from the onion and the ginger in particular. And what we want to do is actually just reduce it till it's semi-dry and then we're going to add the oil in, okay? But like, an, just give me a second in the meantime, I want to go and grab a sieve to sift out all the... I might just use this here. Okay, I thought I had to run into the other room, okay. Okay, so is it, see all these bits here? Let's take these out. I'm going to add it to the sauce later on. Okay. So we've got this. We're going to add some of my chili. Okay, this is actually quite spicy. And again, if you don't have chili, you can add. If you don't have chili, you can add bottled chili sauce, you can add crushed chili, you can add, add chili flakes, whatever works for you, okay? And 
the tomato sauce. Okay, we're putting ketchup in here. I forgot to go through the ingredients with you guys that much. Okay, so this like I, I always tell people that I think the purest like especially if you're a non-Malaysian Singaporean chef, but the purists might think, oh, what's ketchup doing in a Malaysian recipe? It must be inauthentic. It must be a Western bastardization of an Asian recipe. No, we do actually use tomato ketchup in a number of our dishes. Okay, we don't go crazy. I mean, they're not swimming in tomato sauce, but it does exist in certain dishes. Okay, and this is one of them. Okay, now, unfortunately, my ketchup has got <laughs> this really, really old ketchup. You don't want to know how old. Uh, it's really old as in like you know from my restaurant days and if you know how old Noah is you know how long ago I closed my restaurant um, but there's a lot of oxidation happening in this here so it looks a little bit darker than you would expect okay but different different brands different bottles of tomato ketchup will be a bit different okay so this will produce a darker sauce overall but again let's fry this up get rid of uh, the juices and then we're going to add oil and then we're going to fry it as with all the cookbooks say till the oil separates okay but so far you can see this is not a complicated recipe this is a something that i think most people should be able to comfortably pull off and again if you're anti-seafood use chicken right uh you can put this as a sauce over steamed fish if you want sort of thing this is a very very versatile sauce and even put it on like uh, vegetables, eggplant, okay? Maybe you're vegan or something like that. So if you're vegan, obviously leave the egg out, but you can still thicken up the sauce with the potato starch or corn starch or whatever else you want to use, okay? And just like separately roast some eggplant or fry up some eggplant and um, pour this over. And the other thing I tell my students, my coaching students, if you're vegetarian, I think some of you know because if you're part of my Malaysian street food community, I, I see a lot of mentions among the vegetarians of uh, mushroom powder. Okay, we Asians use mushroom powder in lieu of um, chicken seasoning, chicken powder, or something like that in our food. Okay, so the Aussies among you, if you're cooking for vegetarian people, look for mushroom powder. It does not look or taste anything like what you expect it is very very bland okay it does not taste mushroomy it's not going to ruin your dish it's in fact like a very very subtle seasoning that we use in lieu of like chicken stock granules chicken stock cubes if you want you know for, um we don't yes chicken stock cubes but a lot of the time i have to kind of use that as a uh, point of reference for westerners who are new to asian cooking all right so in so far as chicken stock powder this is what i use no i'm not being sponsored by them unfortunately uh chicken powder you go to any asian grocery store you should be able to see rows and rows of not just chicken powder or different brands of it but different like tweaks to it okay it might be a gourmet chicken powder it might be a whatever okay but we use that in our cooking it's almost like a dirty secret i've done when i was the ambassador of malaysia kitchen here in australia i actually mentioned it and i was pulled aside and told please don't mention it because it's kind of like a <laughs> westerners that like the idea of you adding something to your food that does not seem to be you know pure if you like okay so but if you go to any malaysian eatery malaysian chef's kitchen or something like that you know their mise en place which is what they have on plate on hand next to their cooking station like westerners mise en place might be like olive oil and salt and cracked pepper or something like that the asians will have like oyster sauce soya sauce and chicken powder okay so uh unless you're anti it for whatever reason okay because nowadays there's a lot of uh, corporate <laughs> stuff that dictate what you do and do not use in your cooking especially if you're cooking for a large hotel chain or something like that that caters to a lot of westerners they might decide okay only <laughs> straight from the farm stuff but yeah if you got into the whole cooking thing for the flavor as opposed to trying to kind of like uh you know <laughs> kind of like make it like gluten free or whatever free or something like that then you would have chicken powder in your food okay now i'm trying to find a ladle just give me a second okay so okay you see most of the moisture has come out let's add the oil now So 
So now we're basically looking to fry it up, to roast it essentially, okay, with the oil. <laughs> and depending on the type of chili you're using, it might be a brighter red. Depending on the type of tomato ketchup you're using, it might be a brighter red as well. Okay, but this particular version, my version, is going to be quite dark because of both. Because <laughs> I put very little chili in it because it's quite spicy. And also because the ketchup is quite dark. Okay, let's put some water in here, okay? Now, a lot, a lot of, <coughs> a lot of Singaporeans uh, serve this with these manto buns. That was not how I grew up eating chili crab all right so i don't know if it's a singaporean thing or whether it's a malaysian and singaporean thing that came along after i left uh, the country but i've always only eaten this with rice okay just as an fii but yeah the buns they can either be steamed or they can be deep fried okay <clears throat> but again um <clears throat> the point of the buns is so they can soak up the the sauce okay which is why this dish is quite saucy generally okay so you're simmering this now you want to add the seasoning okay remember you want a balance of sweet and sour and spicy okay the spice is already in there i'm going to add a little bit more savoriness to it by adding a bit of chicken powder and obviously you can just add a little bit of salt instead of that you can add a little bit of soy sauce if you want a little bit of fish sauce they all work okay not what i want i want some sugar okay Now, if you know my cooking, everything is very uh, get aga aga, which means to guesstimate. And part of the reason is that I, I try to tell people to kind of like think outside the constraints of measuring everything because, you know, different brands of ketchup even would, you know, be different slightly. Okay, they might be more sweet, it might be more tangy and whatever else. Okay, so don't get hung up on trying to measure everything to the nth degree. I get a little bit frustrated when they do that and then when something doesn't turn out, they get really confused and they think there's something wrong with your recipe. No, um, you know, even the humidity in the air can affect how your dish turns out, okay, depending on what you're cooking. Um, so just break free from the, the compulsion to measure everything. Okay, now I've got lemon juice, add some lemon juice. I'm putting my tamarind in here, like I said, because I don't have tamarind, uh, lemon juice here. Now, tamarind produces the sourness, but tamarind has a little bit of a different vibe to lemon juice. Okay, lemon juice will be sharper, okay? Uh, tamarind has a more rounded, slightly even sweet flavor, if you like. Okay. This thing is super, super sensitive to it's a Swedish product, so there's a lot of fail-safe mechanisms built into it. I spilled a little bit of water here and it's turned off the stove completely. It back on okay so again you've got a balance of sweet sour and spicy let's taste test this okay needs a little bit more sourness in my opinion so tamarind is a little bit more full bodied like i said okay and tamarind you can either buy like in a block which will require you to actually cut it into chunks and then simmer it in a saucepan with water until they break down, okay, into a mushy porridge, and then you uh, feed that through a sieve and scrape it through. And what you produce after you've sieved it is the tamarind concentrate. Okay, I actually just use it straight out of a jar like this. Okay, and you can buy it out of a jar at Asian grocery stores, or like I said, you know, you can do the whole hog of actually buying like tamarind. See, even like sometimes you'll see tamarind pulp that are labeled seedless. You think, oh, seedless means I don't have to strain it. Okay, no, you do, because even though it's seedless, it's still very fibrous. You leave the fibers in your pot of boiled tamarind, um, it's not going to be that pleasant, right? Now, again, another thing I notice a lot of recipes, a lot of chefs tell you to do is just soak the tamarind in. Um, in some boiled water or something like that and cover to me soaking it does not cut it okay it, it's not enough just to soak it for 10 minutes you need to boil it uh, for a few minutes to soften it to the point where you can actually um, break it up break it down and, and sift it okay okay so i'm just gonna throw the 
leftover bits of the crab. So again, guys, the crab was provided to me by Seafood uh, Tavis, bit.ly slash Seafood Tavis, the Facebook group. And like I said, uh, this is to support businesses affected by the lockdown. So if you visit uh, bit.ly slash Seafood Tavis, you'll see that they post prices for their live seafood a couple times a week. And if you're in the area in Bankstown or Sydney in general, you can drop over and pick it up and their wholesale prices. And they usually supply restaurants, but because of the lockdown, they've had to start supplying direct to the public to make up for the drop in sales to restaurants, okay? So let's throw the bits of crab back in here. Okay, I might actually add a little bit more water. Okay, so we're gonna simmer this back in here, but not for long, okay? These are like, when you take them out of the oil after frying, okay, you see how they're nice and crusty, okay? And they look bigger, okay? So if you were actually using raw seafood and simmering it from scratch, um, visually, in my opinion, it will look a little bit more <laughs> less, less interesting, <laughs> okay? But it's up to you. Okay, so let's bring this up. To a boil again. And I always tell people like Westerners, they always buy seafood that's already cooked. Okay, don't do that. Buy raw, uh, buy seafood that's raw, um, or you know, better still buy them live. Okay, so you can um, get them fresh. Um, but if you were, if you had to use cooked seafood. What I would personally do, <coughs> I'm trying to think what I would personally do. I would personally uh, actually dip them in the uh, egg wash and flour and then flash fry them and then pour the sauce over it since it's already cooked up, okay? Um, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So, but ideally use raw seafood for this. But if you, you're doing the prawn thing, uh, just fry it, no need to simmer here, okay? The prawns cook too fast for you to need to simmer it. If you're cooking like a really soft fish, again, don't simmer it separately. Fry it or grill it or, 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 or steam it, whatever it is you do with it, okay? And then pour the sauce over it, okay? And if you can't afford mud crab, which is what this is, okay? In Australia, crab's expensive, especially mud crab. Can't afford mud crab, get something cheaper. In all honesty, thanks. I'm assuming it's thanks to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, the prices have dropped notably, okay? Mud crab prices are a lot lower than what they were before the lockdown. But um, if you can't afford expensive mud crab, you can get the cheaper varieties of crab that you can pick up at Sydney stores. I used to like Spanner crab, okay? So you can look up Spanner crab or uh, even Blue Swimmer if you have to, okay? I used to like Blue Swimmer a lot, but then it, Blue Swimmer suddenly got really expensive, so it's almost better just to go with mud crab okay so simmer we're gonna take this out oh where's my bowl where did i put my bowl Okay, so let's take out the crab bits. Alright, so you've got the sauce. Let's just turn down the heat a little bit. Now you're going to thicken up the sauce, first of all, with the potato starch. So that's potato starch, and I need a spoon. I'm so organized, aren't I? Hang on.
All right. So potato starch. Don't go too crazy on it, okay? It's like a two teaspoons maybe. Let's try it with two teaspoons. And you want to add a little bit of water to this, cold water. Mix this around. And turn down the heat a little bit. Okay. Do we want more sauce? Maybe add a little bit more sauce. Back up. Okay, I want to bring it back up to a quick swim, swimmer, uh, simmer. And don't forget, guys, like I said, I, I, I keep telling you guys last week and yesterday's broadcast that Facebook is clamping down on my ability to not just share or invite people to my cook along, but also it's stopping me from being able to send you the recipe via Facebook itself. So if you want the recipe, please sign up to my cook along link down the bottom, bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along, all lowercase, Jackie spelled J-A-C-K-I-E, okay? Jackie M cook along and that will put you in my list, especially tagged for people who are interested in the recipes and uh, and you'll get that in an email soon, okay? I know I said that and people were wondering where last week's recipe was because they were worried they'd missed out, but no, I'm just running a little bit behind, guys. I've got a lot of things happening behind the scenes at my, <laughs> with my work and etc. Um, but you will get it, okay? So, but make sure you sign up for it, okay? So here's the potato starch. You can use corn starch, you can use tapioca starch. Let's throw it in. Mix it in, okay. You think it, if you think it needs a little bit more, you can add more, okay. So it's just sticking it up beautifully. Like I say, of all the starches, uh, potato starch costs five dollars. This bag of potato starch cost me five dollars. Same bag of tapioca starch cost me like a dollar twenty or something like that. Okay, so it does cost a lot more. Okay, so there you go. That's the sauce. Let's turn it off. Now we've got the egg, remember? The egg plus one egg white, okay? You can just use egg if you want, or you can just use egg white. Let's move this away from the hot part of the stove, because a lot of people make the mistake of cooking the eggs, okay? You don't want to do that, so you want to break this up. Okay, now you throw it into this. Remember, it's off the heat now, okay? Okay, so you're gonna stir it in one direction. Okay, voila. So crab. some just spring onion here again from my garden would you believe I, I grew these spring onion from uh, spring onion stumps so I bought like some spring onion to eat and then I stuck the stumps in water and then I chucked them in my balcony garden and they grew okay and this was just right before the lockdown so they're not very big but yeah and I grew some coriander too. So voila, okay. That's your Singapore, Malaysian <laughs> chili crab. All right guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, thanks uh, for your time and thanks to Tavis for supplying me with the crab. I'm gonna enjoy this. And uh, if you want the recipe, sign up to 
my list of bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along and stay posted all right I know some of you are very motivated to actually cook along so uh, we're going to separately create zoom sessions where you can do that and that will actually require that you actually properly register and that th those will be private sessions okay but these are broadcast so for those of you who talk about tuning in and not being able to find me just go to my Facebook page Jackie M food but uh, Facebook.com slash Jackie M Food. It will be pinned to the top of the page and you will see my broadcast and you know sign up for the event. And I always tell you guys, people see the event when I share the events because I'm not allowed to invite you now, right? Because of Facebook. I see the event, don't just click interested, click inside the event and then respond going. Okay, that's how you get the notification when Jackie posts the ingredients list, when Jackie posts any kind of giveaways in there, when Jackie goes live, it will say, uh, Jackie, um, the event's about to start and stuff like that. Then when you go and follow the notification and click on the event itself, the broadcast will be there. But obviously Facebook is again stuffing me out, so it's not doing that. But yeah, it's at, basically at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jackie M Food is my main Facebook page. If you want to interact with my free community is Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. Just do a search on Facebook for that and the all the broadcasts go there as well. And finally, if you want to learn from me and you only want to pay a very, very low monthly subscription and support me in what I do with all the content I create, you get a free, you get a, a, a course, a, a cooking course with it over 50 videos and more to be added. You get uh, an Asian ingredients video library, all shot by me of all these different types of Asian ingredients, what to do, if you can't find them, what to do, where do, where do you buy them, how do you use them, and how to make your own, or how can you leave it out, and that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of great content there, not just there, not just that, once a week I hop on there and answer all your Q&As related to Malaysian Singaporean street food cooking, and I also do cooking uh, live broadcasts in there as well, which are specific and they are more long form. They're not like easy Malaysian or through lockdown cooking or something like that. These are actually recipes that I would attack, uh, approach and, and, and a tackle as a, a, a restaurant owner, okay? So yeah, thanks again for your support guys. And don't forget to just comment and say, uh, you know, hello and let me know where you're watching from and I'll respond after the fact. I'll see you later, ciao.